Hi, welcome, my name is Max and this is my series about World War I and today I talk about John Keegan and the things I found interesting so far from this book. It's a very good written book and uh, it's the first book I read in English about the topic. Of course, I read a lot of uh, German works. Um, I was educated in, in Germany in history, so in school and um, but uh, I have to say we have pretty much a good take on World War One, even though it's only seen as a um, gateway to World War Two. So, which also Keegan says, he says in one of the first chapter that it's only. Um, like this or it's not only like this it's like this you have the world war 2 is the continuation of world war 1 and it's logical um it, it it comes logical after world war 1 because all the setup where the european nations were um in the early 20th century let no other um, solution. So, what do I mean by that? Or what does uh, John Keegan listed? What was the setup of the of the states of Europe? So many European countries were monarchies back then, except uh, Switzerland and uh, France, and. there was this arms race so every nation would want to become the military strength so for example france with 40 million people would want to have as much soldiers as germany had with 60 million people so Germany would want even more soldiers. England or Britain would want to have the greatest navy. Germany also would want uh, navy on the same uh, um, same big as the British navy, so we could fight them. And there was. A lot of trouble with the Russians who had 50% um, more people compared to I guess the nine, 19, um, 1890 to uh, 1910 50% more people huge masses of people so and also something that they did which I wasn't really aware of. Um, we drafted people into the armies, yes, I knew that, but uh, it was like this. Um, Germany started this and the other nations seemed to copy it. So, Germany did like this. You were um, drafted into the army, you remained there for two years, and then you had to um, go there for five years with an annual training program. So you were from the military age to the age of 39 in the first reserve. From um, 40 to 45 in the second reserve. And this was really a difference compared to the time before and that meant that huge mass of people could be drafted rather effortly I might say. So 
this was the arms race and um, also the time was really interesting in uh, in regard of um, how people felt we felt like we couldn't break out another war in Europe which was obviously not true and it reminds me of the situation in in Europe um, before the Crimea war in uh, 2014 but also the time um, after the first Crimea the first Ukrainian Ukraine um, Russian war um, where people said like ah oh, nothing will happen in in Europe and though it factually happened and people were not prepared we had no people who told them how bad the consequences of the war are so this is very akin to today so this is uh, definitely a parallel people said that uh, there couldn't be a war because all the nations are interdependent and we hear that today as well so um, people said that because um, everyone was indebted to everyone especially to the Americans um, there couldn't be a war something along these lines and uh, this uh, this would not happen there was a man um, named Angel John Angel something like this uh, I have to look it up maybe I read it um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Norman Angel and He said something like this, and this uh, this reads very uh, libertarian, I think. This was in 1912, by the way. Commercial interdependence, which is the special mark of banking, as is, is the mark of no other profession or trade, is in quite the same degree. The fact that the interest and solvency of one is bound up with the interest and solvency of many that there must be confidence in the due fulfillment of mutual obligation or all sections of the edifice crumble is surely doing a great deal to demonstrate that morality after all is not founded upon self-sacrifice but upon enlightened self-interest a clearer and more complex understanding of all the ties that bind us to the one of the other and such, cl such clearer understanding is bound to improve not merely the relationship of one group to another but the relationship of all men to all men to create a consciousness which must make for more efficient human cooperation, cooperation a better human society so yeah it would not be like this as we know this was two years before world war one and i will close this video because i want to have this rather um short it's just uh, just uh, just my thoughts to the to the quick read of the first chapter um, one thing I have with, uh, radicals um, Ah, okay yeah this point yeah I found it interesting because um, 
generally I'm not uh, that much into, into Marxism. However, you have to note that um, socialists and Marx, Marxist movements pressured the European nations, for example Germany, to um, enact labor welfare laws. So, even though um, I don't think uh, their ideas work as a totality, they pressured nations, and they do the, today as well, to um, enact laws to make something better. And this is a, a thought I, I had here. Um, and I thought like, um, yeah, maybe some, it's not like um, we have to do exactly what, for example, um, rather radical socialists say. It's more like, um, is there a kernel of truth? And um, what will um, the so moderate powers do as an answer to it? So will this be a net good? So I think this is an uh, interesting um, interpretation of opposition in a, in a democracy. And yeah, I found this interesting. I could talk a lot longer about this, but uh, I want this sweet, sweet and short. And I have already, I have 10 another chapters ahead. So thank you very much. And... Bye.